Adam Conrad is presented by Perry Wellington Realty with nine offices, including Cumberland, Maryland, and Bedford, Pennsylvania. Broker Adam Conrad is licensed in Maryland, West Virginia, and Pennsylvania, and he owns Advanced Academy, a real estate school. He can help you with home buying and selling questions. We'll be discussing mortgages and all things real estate with you for the next 30 minutes. Ask the Realtor on 1270 AM WCBC. And a very pleasant good afternoon, everybody. We're back with Ask the Realtor on 1270 AM WCBC. Paul Mullen on this side of the glass. On the other side, with camera again today, Adam Conrad. Hi, Adam. You bet, Paul. I'm putting you through this again, aren't I? <laughs> well, I, are we putting me through it, or are we putting the uh, viewers through yeah, it? I, I think it's probably the viewers. Uh, there, there you go. To there sit you go. This, uh, I make my agent sit down and watch it. It's as punishment. No, no I'm, just, I'm just kidding. No, it's a, it's a, I think it's a great opportunity to uh, archive uh, the shows and to get uh, a bunch of the information available to people who may not be able to catch us at 1230 in the afternoons. Uh, it's, you know, it's uh, offline. You can catch it on YouTube. You can watch the video or you can uh, play it on iTunes. I think I got it figured out to get it over to iTunes. So in any case, uh, we've got a couple of ways for you to watch us. I can't wait until those royalty checks start rolling in, you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you and me both. Uh, that'll work out pretty good. We can, uh, you know, go. We, we can go buy a house with it, right? Yeah. Be a lot of fun. You know, with the, the temperatures this week running up to 90 degrees, yesterday in Baltimore County they actually let the kids out early from really? school because it was so hot down there. Wow, that's pretty, that's sweltering. Yeah, they didn't have to do it here. Most of the schools here have air conditioning. But, of course, with the theme of the week being hot weather, we're going to talk about what are you going to do in the fall, right? Yeah, isn't, that, isn't that great? You know, <laughs> I, I have this knack for uh, doing the exact, uh, it, would, it would seem like the exact opposite thing of what you should be thinking. But, uh, you know, this is just, you know, part of the notion of planning and trying to get ready for the future. And uh, the other thing I like to do is I like to save money where I can, uh, mm -hmm. Paul. So if, if I can do, if I can work something out that I can maybe buy something a little off season. Uh, not a bad idea. It's a great time of the year to buy uh, outdoor furniture and out, you know, grilling equipment. Uh, anything for outdoors right now is probably deeply discounted as the merchants are getting ready to make room for uh, seasonal merchandise for the, for the fall. Well, time is running out too on what you can do outside. No kidding. Yeah. I, I hate to say that but when it was over 90 yesterday. It's like, why, why are we talking about the fall? Uh, but in a week or two, when that cold, when that weather changes uh, pretty radically, you'll be saying, "Oh yeah, that guy, I remember that those guys on the radio were talking about some things to get ready for fall." Yeah, did, did you have a project? I know you're a busy guy. Did, do you have any projects you got to do around the house before the weather forces you inside? Well, you know, the first order of business is to close the pool. Uh, so that's the w one thing we always face right after Labor Day. It's like we used to try to keep it open well into September, and it's it's just a exercise in futility to try to keep it open long. You're inviting so, catastrophe in weather then, aren't you? And, and, uh, and not only that, leaves. Uh, you know, we, we just get, you know, the trees start sh are shedding their, their leaves like crazy right now, and so I'm just fishing leaves out of the pool. So what's, you know, what's the point uh, at that, you know, at that juncture? So that plus uh, just, you know, you can look around and you see a lot of things like, oh, man, I really got to get to that, you know, that I got to clean out those gutters that I didn't clean out in the spring. And there's just a number of things that you, you really, uh, you, you could have overlooked. And when it's really hot outside, you just don't really feel like cleaning gutters out. That's for sure. Well, you mentioned gutters. That's my project this weekend. Oh, there you Not go. Not cleaning out the gutters, but actually uh, working on the attachment of the gutter to the house. Oh, yeah, that's you a know, good one. Yeah. Well, uh, our house, when they put it together, used gutter spikes. Oh, okay. I'm going to put in gutter screws to kind of make it a little bit better. Oh, that's even better. Yeah. yeah. So that, you know, I'm thinking. That's I'm right. I'm thinking. You're, you're, you're right on target. You know, it's uh, the time of the year you start thinking about these projects. And, you know, as the leaves, leaves start to drop, you start thinking, hmm, here's a few things I ought to take a look at. And that's kind of what I thought we'd maybe take a look at for today's program uh, is thinking ahead a little bit. Yeah, thinking ahead a little bit. Now, over the years, I've probably done just about everything you can do to a house uh, where, you know, some of it may have been torturing the house, <laughs> but uh, I can remember working with my sister probably 30 years ago in LaVale, and we actually added insulation into one of the old homes. That, that's where you, you hook up the tube and you blow it into oh, the walls. Oh, the blown insulation, right, yeah. Yeah, that, that took a couple of days. Yeah, it's a big project. Yeah, it, it is. But uh, it was an old home, and it didn't have the in insulation that uh, you might find going into the construction today. And uh, it certainly helped them with the heating bills over the winter. Yeah, no, no doubt. Homes that had 
uh, you know, essentially had, uh, you know, horsehair plaster on the inside and they were studded and, and, you know, the frame, a lot of it was, um, you know, frame exterior construction and just wood lap siding. You know, they didn't have any, any uh, form of insulation in those walls whatsoever because, you know, let's face it, the coal that was heating the homes a lot of times was fairly inexpensive. Uh, so, and that's the way it is in a lot of the homes in this region, uh, up and down I-99, you run into that. Uh, but that's changed quite a bit over the years as fuel costs have really started to skyrocket. Yeah, the one thing you think about when you're thinking about adding insulation, maybe not uh, throwing in the whole blower concept. And I don't even know if they do that anymore. I just remember doing it then. Yeah, the old cellulose uh, blown insulation, a lot of uh, places has, you know, had, had that uh and I'm not even sure if they do that so much anymore. Is a lot of times they'll, what they'll do is they'll actually gut the interior and they'll use that spray foam. You see it on TV all the time. You know, they yeah. spray and it just expands and fills in the gaps between the uh, the studs. Yeah. You see that quite a bit. And and I think now uh, there's a lot out there about where as part of your utility package you get a free energy analysis of some sort. And yeah, can... a lot of places will do. And, and actually, if you don't get a free one, you can always pay somebody to come in and do uh you know like a loss analysis on the house and uh, they'll they'll typically stick up a, a blower on your door and then they'll you know run that fan and and the fan will basically tell it how what's the what's the loss uh inside the house and boy i'll tell you it's shocking sometimes when you see those run and see how much it actually um you know loses in terms of uh of uh yeah, energy can be lost in in the house either for heating or air conditioning now that a lot of places are air conditioned Got a call on the line. Let's go to the line and say good afternoon. How are you doing? Not so bad. How are you? Got a question for us? Yeah, I want to know if you have any Leo Lyon Club tickets. Well, uh, right now we're doing our real estate show. Uh, the auction will be back tomorrow on WCBC, but you can call off air at 301 724 5000. And they would be. We don't have the auction today, then. Yeah, we don't have the auction on the air right now, but they will uh, pick you up here. If you call back on that number, and they will be happy to help you out, okay? What's that number again, though? Uh, seven two four five thousand. Okay, thank you. Uh huh. Thank you. That's great. We'll answer all callers. Yeah, we do. We do. Well, he, I thought he was going to chime in with my blown insulation He's deal. Tell us a didn't. story about what it was like uh, back in the day. Yeah, just right. throw on another log, and you didn't have to worry about the insulation. There Anyhow, you, you can get the energy analysis there to kind of. Uh, give you an idea of where you can shore up your home a little bit to make it uh, not only uh, better for you now utility wise but also if you decide to put it on the market uh, to make that a, a selling point rather than a detriment. Yeah one of the things we like to see in a lot of the listings these days is the utility consumption on a house so uh, buyers will often ask and it's great as an agent if you can actually gather that information in advance and provide it uh, buyers will often ask, you know, what's the average uh, electric bill? What's the average gas bill or oil bill uh, for the property? It's really nice to be able to show that the house has very little or very low energy consumption. Well, now on your electric bill especially, I know we look at it and they say in comparison to your neighbors. Yes. So you get that comparative analysis right off your head. So if yours is running a little bit high, there's probably something you can do to make it a lot better. Yeah, you know, it's quit, quit running that toaster all the time or whatever it is that you're running and yeah, if you have a bunch of teenagers in the house, uh, hair dryers, uh, you know, there's some appliances that really just suck elect electricity. Uh, and there's a, a number of appliances that are actually, uh, we like to refer to them as vampire, uh, the, you know, ele electric users. They actually suck power uh, no matter whether they're on or not, because a lot of our electronics now are actually instant on, like yeah. a lot of televisions, game consoles. Um, if you have something that has a lump in the line, yeah, yeah. that causes that uh, to be sucking power all the time. Right, and, and here's one that a lot of folks overlook is their cable. If you've got one of those cable converter boxes uh, from the local uh, cable company, uh, those things actually use a lot of power as well. A lot of folks don't realize that. Yeah, I, I know my wife has gone around unplugging appliances because of uh, the advice that we've just passed along here because... No use in paying for something that you're not using and are not going to use for, for some time. Also, there are appliances in your basement sometimes that you leave plugged in, and that's not a good idea because it just sucks power that you don't want to pay for. Yeah, you don't realize that they're actually taking a lot of energy and you're not really getting any benefit of it, other than 
like I said, a lot of the things have power switches on, like a game console of all things, you wouldn't think would use power, but because of the nature of these things being able to power, power up instantly, uh, new TVs are a good example. I mean, they actually use a good bit of power just sitting idle. Uh, so that's something to think about. Yeah, anytime you see the little flashing light on the begin, uh, front of the TV looking for a signal to come in, well, that's using power. So you take that to the bank. Or, yeah, take it to the bank if you can get it, yeah, you get can, it corrected. You can save the money, sure. Yeah. Now, uh, we're getting into the fall season. And over the summer, you, you said uh, you're fixing your, your pool for the winter. And you said we shouldn't have a pool or go out and get a pool to add value to the home because no. that, that's not a good idea. Terrible advice. What, yes. what about a fireplace? Uh, Does fire, that help? The fireplaces uh, are, are a great investment depending on the type you know a lot of folks like a wood burning fireplace uh the only downside to a wood burning fireplace they aesthetically look beautiful but they're terribly terribly inefficient as mm -hmm. a heating source yeah uh so they do add value to the home uh actually uh, a gas fireplace or a gas insert or even mm -hmm. one of those stoves you know you get like a pellet stove or a gas stove that's a standalone that's vented uh, to the outside and particularly vented ones the the ones that are, they did for a long time offer a ventless uh, version of a lot of these and um, if you talk to the fireplace folks they're not big fans of the ventless uh, types of fireplaces but um, in any case a lot of fireplaces will add value to homes and they can also offset energy bills uh, and not the least of which they can prepare you for power outages mm -hmm. uh, so if you've got a propane or you know gas fireplace that uh, doesn't use electricity to ignite you know maybe has a striker or there's a way for you to light it without electricity um, that's great because if the power goes off, you know, most modern heating systems do require electricity to run. Uh, oh, yeah. Yeah, so they're, they're going to need the, particularly if you have forced air uh, and your electricity goes out, you may still have gas uh, coming into your home, but no way to run the blower on the furnace. So it, it's nice to have an alternative uh, heat source and, uh, you know, one that will typically add value to your property. We're, we don't have this on the list here, but let me throw it at you. Because you're that kind of guy, I can throw it. At. What about uh, getting a generator for your home? Does yeah. that does that work good for you? In uh, not only the short term, but also the long term and the value of your home. Uh, I'll tell you, they do not return dollar for dollar. Invest, you know, for your investment, you can easily tie up ten thousand dollars in a in a generator project for your home. Uh, what I would look at for the generators is two things: is uh, one, are you in an area where it you you consistently lose power. I, uh, the house I owned before the one I own now, we would frequently have power outages. And, you know, sometimes it'd be out for a couple of minutes, sometimes it'd be out for a couple of hours. And uh, that's not a big deal, but if you, you're in a position where you could lose power for a substantial amount of time and add to that, that you're in a low-lying area where you might need a sump pump running, mm -hmm. uh, you got trouble in your hands. So you better find a way to uh, make sure that that sump pump can run or if you have other, you know, other things. I mean, we have a lot of folks that have uh, oxygen uh, systems. You know, they need for healthcare. Uh, you know, so if you depend on power uh, and it's more than an inconvenience for you, uh, it could be life-threatening or threatening to your property. Then I'm a big fan of a generator. I really think that they they're a great investment. Yeah, a, a property protective investment, I guess, would they, be. They really are. Um, just one tip for those people who might be in low-lying areas: if you've got a sump pump. And you're, you know, what, what happens during a storm, it rains real heavy and then you lose power, right? So a sump mm -hmm. pump that can't run uh, is really meaningless or useless. So mm -hmm. uh, there's a couple of things you can do with a sump pump. You can get battery backups for some of them. And then the coolest thing I've seen, if you're on municipal water, is they have a hydraulic sump pump, mm -hmm. which actually runs on water. So this is a, like a, a real brain bender for you, but your local plumber should be able to install this for you. They can actually install a backup where your sump pump, you, all you do is turn a valve, and the sump pump will actually run off the water pressure in your house. Hmm. So you don't actually even need power to run the sump pump. And uh, I just sold a house that had that, and that is a fantastic feature. Oh, yeah. To be able to run the sump pump. Because, you know, typically you need the sump pump when it's raining real hard, and then the power goes out. Yeah. And now you've got a bunch of damage. A, a lot of times in real estate, uh, you hear the term wow factor. Yeah. To me... You explaining that, that would be a wow for me. That yeah, would be I, like... A lot of folks don't know they exist. Right. A hydraulic sump pump. It's like, what are you talking about? It runs on water. Are you serious? It actually runs on the water pressure from the city water supply. So you just turn, if you can turn on a spigot and get water during a storm, 
Now, obviously, I'm, a, I'm on a well, so yeah. a hydraulic sump pump's not going to do me any good uh, because I still have to be able to operate the well to get water. But if you've got city water and you can turn the spigot on, you can run a sump pump. Wow. That I did not know. There you go. No <laughs> additional charge for today's, for that information for today's show, Paul. Yeah. <laughs> Now, a couple minutes ago, we were talking about uh, insulation and how you want to, you know, kind of eliminate the spots where you might lose some energy out the, the cracks in the house. You don't want to have it airtight, though, do you? No. I mean, one of the things that uh, the only danger in, in heavily insulating a home is that you wind up getting it so airtight that you wind up having condensation. Mm. And there's nothing worse than uh, insulation that's wet. Uh, so you really don't want that because then you've got all kinds of attendant problems, which, you know, trapped moisture can wind up becoming eh, things like mold. Yeah. And uh, that's going to cause you, I mean, mold in a property these days, folks, is uh, is a, is a non-starter. I mean, it wow. really, really messes up a deal if there's it, mold in a house. It kills the deal or at least drains your uh, whatever money you want to make in that deal you, that kind of disappears real quick it, it really does and, and, it, and mold is uh, almost stigmatizes properties and to some degree i mean some properties we, matter of fact we just picked up a property for sale that uh, a couple of other agents had in another market uh, had it listed for sale and the you know the everybody knows after a certain amount of time that the property had some sort of mold or fungus in the property and uh, so that, you know, everybody passes that along. So we wouldn't list it until that was remediated. Huh? Yeah. Not a bad idea. Exactly. Not a bad idea. So you keep that in mind as a buyer and a seller. Absolutely. You always want to check that out. And uh, a lot of times that is not evident to the eye. So you're going to have to do a little research and a little looking around there, too. Mm -hmm. um, what about pipes? Now, we talked about insulating the walls and the ceiling and the attic and, and things like that, but uh, pipes, you want to make sure that you're not losing energy there, too. Right. I mean, a couple of things with the pipes, um, you know, particularly hot water pipes in a house that don't have insulation around them, they're going to lose that warm water that's running through them. So if they're, you know, hot water in terms of your uh, water spigots, as we like to say, right, you know, so the tap, uh, you know, they're going to lose some heat from heat loss running through the house. So having those insulated is very helpful. Uh, oftentimes, insulating cold water pipes is very important, particularly if they're near outside walls. Uh, many people got, I know in this area, all around here, we had problems last winter with uh, freezing and, and, and bursting pipes uh, because the temperatures had dropped so drastically. Yeah, and, and, and that'll happen with your municipal water and sewer supply as well, so that, that, that's something that ha happens there. If you get an older home, I, I've also seen where some of the pipes run actually outside underneath the home. Right. And uh, that, that's probably the worst of all worlds. Right, yeah. So, so you know, when they come in from outside, uh, where they're located, I mean, if they're not below the frost line, you're, you're just, you're skirt, you know, you're flirting with danger at that point. Uh, so, you know, there's little remedies you have during the wintertime for that, maybe some tape some heat, you know, some uh, heat tape for the pipes and that type of thing. But best best to get them insulated and keep them insulated. Uh, and also, it's a nice energy saving uh, tip for your hot water pipes, so that you uh, the, you know comes out a little a little quicker. The other thing that you might save money on is dealing with a contractor over the winter when they might be slow. You know, if it, it starting in spring. They want to go gangbusters and get all that outdoor work in, but if you can get a contractor booked in the winter, you might get a better deal. Right. You know, approaching a contractor and letting them uh, take your project on on their schedule. Say, look, you know, I, I've got an insulation project I'd like you to do. You know, can you know whatever you can get to it, and uh, price accordingly. You know, if you need it done in a hurry or on a tight schedule, oftentimes you find that your price is going to be different. Uh, so it's, uh, it's always good to see if you can plan and, and maybe negotiate a deal based on their availability. So that's not a bad idea. What about some things we can do to help out the value of the home? Um, maybe not take much at all to do, but actually uh, does a good good job for you. Yeah, I always like to talk about things like this because, uh, you know, a lot of folks like to tinker. Like you said, you've done just about everything to a home. Yeah. You know, some folks like... Except they, burn one down. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you're, you're off the hook on that one. Yeah, yeah, but, yeah. I haven't done that yet. Uh, so, you know, one of the things you can do, um, you know, a lot of folks like to go to home improvement stores and come up with home improvement ideas and, and you know, hobby, you know, do-it-yourself uh, things around the house. Uh, one of my absolute favorite things to do to a home, and actually I did this in my son's apartment down in 
down in Florida when he first moved in was uh, add ceiling fans. Uh, that is absolutely one of, one of my favorite things to do is because a lot of folks, uh, you know, they have a light in a room, but they could really use a ceiling fan. And if they have a light fixture that's supported in a way that we can put a ceiling fan in easily, uh, again, not all light fixtures can support a ceiling fan box, so be careful about that. Yeah. Uh, but if it will support it, that's a great thing to add. Uh, it adds value to your property. It can reduce your utility bills. And, and frankly, some of, the, some of these look fantastic. I mean, they really add to the decor of a home. Yeah, we have one over the kitchen table, mm -hmm. and uh, we like that. We've thought about doing one in the living room. We haven't gone that far yet. Are there, is there a rule as to, there's too many fans around here? No, I think fans, you can get away with putting fans just about everywhere. Uh, and make sure they're sized appropriately. Uh, my daughter has a fan in her kitchen. It's the cutest little mini, uh, it, it, the, the blades on the fan look like it's, I mean, it, they're like these little small little propeller mm -hmm. little fan. I mean, it's like the smallest little ceiling fan you ever saw. Uh, so, but it's nice because it circulates the air in, in her kitchen. Uh, I think it's a good idea. Um, you know, living rooms tend to be bigger. Don't be afraid to get a big fan uh, yeah, for well, the living room. What, what about the concept heat rises? Yeah, exactly. So if you have that fan blowing it back down, you're going to have a better temperature inversion. Yeah, exactly. So in the summer, uh, you know, the fans, and there's instructions for this, so don't expect me to answer this over the air, but uh, the fans actually have a switch. Most fans will run both directions. Uh, so the you know the fan actually can uh, can cool the room in the summer and can heat it in the winter by pushing the air that's at the top of the room down. So you can actually blow it down in the winter and blow up in the summer. Uh, so that's a nice little feature of ceiling fans as well to help uh, help your heating and cooling bills. Yeah, and uh, lighting. Since we talked about the fan, outdoor lighting is now getting to be pretty big. I know. Uh, over the years, we've gone through a lot of those little outdoor lights that uh, are activated by solar. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm confounded. I have a set of steps at my place that I've gone through two sets of solar lights for, and I'm just ready to yank them all out and just hook up ones with wires on them. Uh, the solar ones just haven't uh, panned out well for me. I've not had good luck with those. But that's personal. I mean, I, I think a lot of folks have done different things with solar lighting, and, and it has come out real nicely. They're easy because you don't have to worry about wiring them up and connecting them together when you do solar lighting. Um, but, you know, when you're outside, and by the way, since we're talking about outside, outside ceiling fans, like under a porch, mm -hmm. can be a fantastic way to enjoy, um, you know, a porch or an outdoor area. Mm -hmm. um, and the other benefit to a ceiling fan outside is that it will oftentimes uh, keep the bugs away because the bugs don't like the, the air movement. Uh, so just a little tip for you there. It's a, that, that's another thing I've never thought of, yeah, but just, it makes tremendous sense. Yeah, just make sure if you're going to put a ceiling fan outside that you put a outdoor ceiling fan. Uh, if you've ever seen anybody put an out, a ceiling fan outside and you see all the all the blades are all drooping, mm -hmm. it's because they use an in, typically use an inside ceiling fan. They actually make different blades that are can handle the moisture. Uh, you uh, talk about things flying around don't like it. Have you ever been been attacked by a hummingbird, Adam? <laughs> no, I have. Oh, really? Oh, I was yeah. outside underneath the, the closer to the feeder probably than I should have been. Next thing I know, there's this big. <laughs> Bug in the hair. I don't oh, think the ceiling fan would have helped there. No, I think the fan would not have uh, not have helped you out too much. Okay. Uh, but back to lighting. Uh, so you know, obviously, there's lots of choices for outdoor lighting. Uh, outdoor lighting is great because it can uh, accent your home, uh, light pathways. It's a you know safety and security item. Uh, so I, I like outdoor lighting. You know, the fact that we have LED and low voltage lighting means that it's not going to cost you a lot to operate uh, from an electrical standpoint, which is good too. And they can do different kind of designs with LEDs these days. I'm sure that can really accent uh, a room no matter what it is. Absolutely. Yeah, that's a, uh, that's, the lighting is, there's so many choices with lighting, it's pretty exciting. And uh, of course, while we're talking about outside and maybe that ceiling fan outside, uh, also the landscaping around the, the residence, uh, not a bad time to rake the leaves and maybe do a little bit more than that. Absolutely. Uh, so in the fall, again, uh, it, you, you pick the plants correctly that will, you know, what were they called, perennials, uh, the, the, the ones that will come back next year. Mm -hmm. uh, I think I got that right. Annuals are the ones you have to plant every year, right? Right. Uh, so you can tell them about the landscape architect, right? Uh, so. A good good thing, uh, pick trees. You can actually buy uh, shrubs and trees. You can buy them very small. They're a lot less expensive when you buy them small. 
then when you buy them bigger and so uh, plant those around that's a great way to uh, increase your property value and the look of your property uh, do take care to make sure you understand how big these are going to become and plant them uh, giving them enough space uh, you'd be surprised after a couple of years of having them that they're growing on top of one another so you may have thought well that looked pretty scattered when I planted them but now all of a sudden they're like on top of one another and and add a foot or two to the estimates that they give you absolutely <laughs> yeah they're not a, not a bad idea and they, they actually talk about trees uh, the other thing with trees that are, are, are great if you're going to plant trees is that you can plant those around the house but make sure you give it some distance from the house uh, trees will have an, an estimated size a height that they will grow and they say that you should plant a tree I think it's the height of the tree plus 25 percent away from your house mm -hmm. so if it's going to get to 30 feet you know definitely put that bugger out there closer to 40 feet away from your property otherwise you're gonna have a much bigger problem if that thing starts to grow over top of your house here's one that comes off the top of the head uh, shrubbery trees is does it add more closer to your house given the space mm -hmm. requirements or uh, would you rather have trees out in the yard or is, it, is, is there any any rhyme or, or reason to that in the real estate business? There's um, a number of, uh, actually there's some, some analysis on this. It says actually the trees add value to your, thousands of dollars of value to your property. You, you do have to take care though that the tree doesn't obscure the house. They, they actually serve a couple of ways. They actually serve as a windbreak. So if you plant them on a northern, I think it's the northern side of a property, mm -hmm. uh, there'll be a windbreak. Uh, obviously, in the southern side, there'll be shade. Um, so, you know, that can help you in your property. And, and they actually equate to thousands of dollars in value. Just make sure they're not growing over top of the house. If they start to grow over top and the branches are now over top of the shingles and that type of thing, they're going to cause damage. And uh, oftentimes when we're in deals, uh, we'll have requests to have the trees cut back as part of the inspection process because mm -hmm. they need to be uh, cut back and they, they pose a, uh, a hazard to the house if they're over top of it. Sounds like your insurance agent is talking to you a little bit there. Get that tree out of here. Yeah. That's going to come through your window. Well, if you haven't picked up on it, real estate has a tremendous amount of facets to it. Uh, a lot of folks uh, don't really, you don't really think about these things, but we deal with these things on a day in, day out basis, uh, you know, in the real estate business program is Ask the Realtor. We do this on Wednesday at 1230 on 1270 AM WCBC. Adam Conrad from Perry Wellington Realty is our expert. Adam, how do they get a hold of your firm and how do they get a hold of you? Yeah, I usually have a paper here nearby for the phone number. It's a 240-979-4660. You can see us on the front page of the Tribune, uh, the Times, uh, Times News. I'm Times sorry, News. I was talking to the Tribune. I was talking to a guy from Johnstown before I got here. Uh, Times News, uh, on Cumberland on Wednesdays, we run a little banner ad across the bottom with our 4.5% commission highlighted. Okay. And, of course, your, your number? Yeah, if you need to get a hold of me directly, uh, I answer my phone. number is 814-934-934. Five two four six, and you can watch this program on Adam's website. Yeah, we have a link on the website, and it'll take you out to YouTube. You can watch this and listen. Okay. Well, we're looking forward to next week when we'll talk about another exciting topic on Ask the Realtor on twelve seventy AM WCBC in Cumberland, Maryland. It's coming up on one o'clock.